Hello and welcome to a new podcast, the first podcast in a very long time. I started a podcast a couple of years ago and I did three and then I just didn't have time to do any. Um, so I waffled on as well. I think the second one was like 40 minutes long. Although I had a lot to say, it was a big waffle. But the reason why I'm going to waffle with this podcast and not do any jump cutting is um, recently I did a, a remaster of Stomp 66 Red Mist video, bringing it out to the bigger scale, giving it a... a a little bit of a polish over in HD and there's some stuff happening with Storm 66 at the moment if you keep an eye on the channel there'll be a lot more stuff coming down the line and I want to remaster a couple of the older videos um, Obsessive Compulsive Autopsy has also been done and um, Obsessive Compulsive are also now called um, Empty Page you know Kelly and Giz went off to do a new band um, Obsessive Compulsive is one of the videos that was removed from my face, uh, Facebook YouTube page because of YouTube copyright. If I make a video and I put it on my page, it's my fucking video YouTube. Um, what happened with it originally with the Obsessive Compulsive video, I sent it to the band, the band had a copy of it, then it appeared on a bigger YouTube site. They've got a lot of videos, yes, it's great exposure for the bands, but for them me to get a copyright strike about my own music video, and then have it physically removed, I was like, fucker. So I, um, I fell out with YouTube for a while about that. Um, so it's a nightmare. So since it's a podcast, I've just got to keep on going. Um, Room 51 is the next video I'm going to do. Room 51 music video, it was 10 years ago. So it's almost like a 10 year anniversary. Room 51 story. Um, Jake, the bass player, is Ned's son. Me and Ned go way back. Ned is obviously the leader of Bill Podmore's Nose, and it was great to see a new generation of music within the Kearney family with Jake taking over. Jake's study room at school was Room 51. That's where the name comes from. Oh, it was 51, or you know, going to Room 51. He had Sean on guitar, not guitar, fucking keyboard guitar. And vocals, you had Nathan Hayes on ripping it up on guitar, and you had Dave Fannin on drums. I know a group of friends from schools, life experiences had great potential when I first seen them. I was like, wow, they went on the star in a TV show um, and did really well for themselves. Um, a couple of gigs down London and stuff like that, they had great exposure. Victim of um, early, early stardom in a way, but went on to do different stuff. I seen Jake the other day, he's doing great for himself. Him and his dad building the garage was like watching fucking Chuckle Vision Brothers go at it. But um, they had great potential and uh, I always said to Ned, I actually always say this to Ned even though early days when I started making music videos, Bill Podmore's known was the first band I ever worked with and I learned a lot from them about how you can just go out and do whatever you fucking want. <laughs> if you want a spaceship land in um, St James's Park, I think Court Ned, um, you can do it, you know, you've just got to have the vision and like you can do anything now with cameras and stuff like that. And I learned a lot from them, but I never thought I actually did a Bill Paul Mosnell's music video and it's something I always push for. Because like, once Ned got in the video editing and stuff like that, he went on to do his own kind of thing. And basically, I need to open a can of pop here. <laughs> and Ned went on to do his own kind of thing and he made some outstanding music videos, some absolutely brilliant ones, hilarious. Um, very um, original content. I would always get the phone call for some absolutely ludicrous. Like, like if he was not humping a fox puppet, he was wanting me to go and kidnap a sheep. Even though he says we had permission, and even though like the farmer was there and let us put lipstick on it, I always deny all knowledge of ever working on that music video. Probably up until this podcast. Even though every time I try to do a podcast, not a podcast, a show reel, um, the shot of Lugless Douglas turning. In the sunlight, it's one of the best things I've ever filmed, like video wise. The sunlight, the fact that there's a fucking hundred sheep and this fucking sheep just looks and it's got this lipstick on. I was like, fuck me, it's like something out of a uh, day of the tentacles, it's like some kind of gnarly cartoon. So, if you check out Bill Podmore's most fleecy love on YouTube, if it's still there, I don't even know if it is, it's on my YouTube page, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I, I, a little hand in that, but I never got around to making the Greatest Bill Pop Most Knows music video. We always wanted to do it. It was a pipe dream. We even talked about it a couple of years ago. It's something that is on the bucket list to do. And when Jake came along and really showed potential his band, I was really inspired by their music and I was really inspired by the song No Star. Summit just captured me. When I first seen them play it live, um, I was just like, fucking hell. Like, well done. And... Um, Ned, you know, Ned as well, seen the same thing, and Ned poured his, poured, 
poured his heart and soul into recording Room 51 song in his attic and recorded that in Dr. Death and fucking hell, it's some, it is probably one of the best songs Ned ever produced on his own. Um, brilliant. Um, what more could you want from the home recording thing, you know? And that was it. I mean, the stars were pretty much aligned to do the music video. And at the time, I had done like music videos for, like Stomp 66, Bolt Down the Cornea, Skin Flint. And I remember, I think it was either Goody from Stomp or Kinney. <laughs> he was just like, what the hell? Because it was almost like a bipolar effect from the um, Stomp 66 video to No Star. But No Star set off a new trilogy of videos. But I was naive, I wanted to do something different. And basically, you know, we went all out with this video. At the time, my cousin had just bought um, the old corporate bank that had a car shop at the bottom of it for years and like he was just like yeah you can film it in there we cleared out this top floor room that probably hadn't seen the light of day where it's seen the light of day because there's big windows there but people going in now probably seeing about 10 people in decades and all of a sudden there's just absolutely loads of us in there everything that in that video is just worth its weight in gold the location looks amazing you've got like vintage televisions what you used to have to put Pounds in the side of it for fun to run, stacked up behind Williams in a dream boat and petticoats. Um, I would have loved it, obviously, CGI Williams in behind it, but just to have them there was amazing. Jake had a group of tyres and a vintage um, Union Jack flag, you know, what used to hang outside the building. Um, there was this random red uh, sofa that appears throughout the video. And we had loads of bits and bobs and we filmed it, I thought it went really well. I was really happy with, was really happy how it came out with natural light as well. I was really grateful for people like James, JP helping us out and stuff like that, especially Ned and especially David, you know, for letting us do it because we run wild and that, you know, we had a great time and that was on the top floor. And then um, I always wanted to bring a story in, like with Stump 66 videos and all that, it was like 100 miles an hour. He's 11 takes, four different camera angles. It's just like, you know, it's just like overload of footage, different angles, different take, no stories in them. So with this, I really wanted to tell a story. And Williams had wrote a really passionate song about a girl. And Emily, who came all the way up from down south um, to be in the music video, did great. I mean, a couple of years ago, I did a music video with Tamar and um, for Balls Down and the Balls Down video got, there was a lot of interference at the time from the record label and the Balls Down video ended up being something completely different what I sort of like really wanted to do and you know Tamar came up and was in the video but then wasn't in the video then she is in the video and sort of like a weird lost way in the woods and Tamar's went on to be a great established actress I mean she was on Silent Witness I was like wow that is Tamar on television I was like wow it's my ex-girlfriend I was just like totally blown away by that you know it's just like it opportunity drops I was just totally dropped her in there as well but uh, um, with the Room 51 video I really wanted to bring in a storyline and I think I lost that with both times so it was great to express how I wanted to bring you know creativity out and that so we got the performance shot and then once we had Emily cast in the video, it was a case of like finding the right locations, finding some good scenarios. It was like planning the day with the guys. We hit gold with the water scene. The reservoir had flooded its banks at that time. And one of the most iconic scenes in the video, to me iconic, is the floating bench scene, which, you know, was just a bench floating in about a foot of water, but it just looks absolutely mesmerizing. And you couldn't beat that, you know, and that is just literally meant to be. And then um, thanks to Kidder and Megan, at the time I was transi transition, tra transitioning from moving out from my exes to my mum's to my new house and Megan and Kidder really stepped up, this was long before they had uh, Lily Bo and Logan and they were absolutely brilliant to let us bring in a band and also Gally was there and JP had a little cameo, my brother James stepped in as the angry boyfriend if you watched the video and it was great we had a great life that night and it just shows you how well you just need to put the camera there with certain people and just steal the show and i love the video it's, it's one of my favorite videos because of the story and how it comes off and i, I love it how you know galley and kid are in it from top of lip shirt it was a good crossover and there's a little nods and cheeks to the heads of other videos ned's in it you know and that was the first one i've sort of maybe it's a trilogy maybe it's a quadrilogy of uh 
music videos because after that I did CCTV2. Well, I was no, sorry, I did the Castro video. The Castro video was the epic one where Room 51 reappeared up and that, looking out the window from that music video down at Galley, who they'd seen at the house party, so that crossed over. Ned was back in the Castro video. Then Room 51 also popped up in the Ink video in the crowd and stuff like that. So everything started to cross over. Jake also reprised his role um, at the free benches that you see in the Room 51 video in the CCTV one. Uh, he's the boy running around in the poo all the time. So CCTV <laughs> will be remastered. I am trying to do a CCTV free. And it's been on the cards for ages. It may be put back to next year because I'm up to some of it. <laughs> so I'm, saying, I'm not saying anything yet, but there might be an opportunity to get some real scale once again on CCTV free. Fucking hell. I just probably need to find the song. <laughs> but yeah, this podcast is a short podcast. It's basically just like something different with the channel. Me being able to rant about a certain thing from the past. And just to wrap it up as well, this is pretty much an echo of Branches. Now, Branches is finished. It is on YouTube. It is my new hour to half an hour movie. Showcases the old school Better Ever stuff mixed with the, the past, the present, crossing over, new elements, different stuff. I mean, retro videos in it. It's fucking mental. Um, but yeah, it's just literally... Doing this now is like a tester. I want to see how it goes. I've got a few ideas for different stuff. But yeah, if you haven't seen Room 51, the band is long gone. But definitely check out Room 51's music video, No Star. It's on my old, it's on this YouTube page from years ago. It will be remastered and brought out. Um, it's not getting re edited or any individual scenes, it's just getting brought up so it doesn't look like a fucking a river, <laughs> a river bank, the old HD footage. So yeah. Thanks, guests, for listening. He said thanks for watching there. Um, but yeah, definitely check out. Oh, by the way, we're talking about bands. Mitch Liban has a new album coming out soon. You can pre order it now. And so does Carve as well. It's got Michael Carroll on his back. So the guys have definitely got um, the work cut out for them very soon. So thanks for listening. Goodbye.